Cool. Now you've been on both sides of uh, the the game now as a scout, as a college coach, and I guess as a player many many years ago. A long time ago. Now, now can you tell me what colleges specifically look for in a recruit? Well, I think there's a big misconception. A lot of players think they have to prove to college coaches what they can do. Actually, what, what high school players need to do is not prove to the college coaches what they can do, but they need to improve their game, their skills. College coaches want to see what skills that you have, not what you're going to show them that you think you can do, but what can you do well, do it. If it's ball handling, if it's passing, if it's if it's shooting the ball, develop a high skill level, because that's what college coaches judge you on first. Then your athletic ability is obviously very important because that enhances your overall game, and coaches look for character. Believe it or not, a lot of coaches are watching body language, how a young man reacts to a certain foul situation, how he reacts to being coached. So to, to college coaches in particular look at talent, judge athletic ability, and then they see a work ethic and a character, and they kind of make a decision if that young man can fit into their system with all those different criteria. Now, now how important is, is character? Because a lot of kids that I talk to think, you know, well, it's my talent only that's going to carry me through. But have you, as a college coach, has there been a time you see a kid and you say, I would take him based on his talent, but his character, the way he carries himself on the, on the court? Absolutely, he... because if you have somebody who has bad character, they're going to bring that character to the locker room, to your university, and they're going to bring your team down. So what coaches look for are what we call locker room guys, guys that are good in the locker room and good on the court. And obviously, academically, they have to be sound and be responsible to take care of their academic work. If a young man has a really bad academic background and his character is questionable, a lot of college coaches will pass on that young man, regardless of the talent level, and so what you do is you limit yourself. When you have poor character and bad academics, you limit where you can go. So the best thing to do is to take your character, your academic, and your talent and make it into one whole yeah. good piece for yourself. Yeah, and one thing that I've picked up from the scouting, being in the scouting business a lot is that colleges, when they ask me about prospects from Illinois who they haven't seen before, not only are they asking me about their game and, and, and you know their attitude, but also what's the work ethic like? How do they improve? Because I know, Players, when they come to colleges, are not finished products. They're, they're pieces of clay ready to be molded. They're right, right. They work ethic. I'm sure that that probably adds a lot too. Well, you're absolutely right. And the NCAA limits college coaches how much they can work with kids once they enroll. Yeah. So now what happens is you have to be self-motivated. You have to be a guy who likes to be in the gym, who wants to get better, who's going to be in there when nobody's looking. It's the guys that really work hard on their own, separate themselves from everybody else at the collegiate level. Now, my uh, last little set of questions before I let you go, because I know we're keeping you from the game right now. Um, the April evaluation period got taken away, so now colleges can only evaluate once during the AAU season, which is July, um, which is limiting a lot of opportunities for players to get seen. How do you feel about these changes? Do you think they're good for the game, bad for the game? I think it hurts the game overall, because what happens is the college coaches only see players live in July compete. They miss the April period of competition and there's too much time between April and July when players can improve, make progress, or they can digress and get worse. And I think bad decisions get made. There's a lot of transfers that go on, and that hurts the game. College coaches need to watch and evaluate as much as possible. And it's hard, Daniel, during the school year for the head coach to get out because he has to prepare his team his for game games. Play, yeah. And in July, you only get to see so many players in a certain window I'd like to see the NCAA reconsider and the college coaches voting reconsider to bring the April period back. I think it will help the recruiting process. I think right now a lot of mistakes are going to be made. Yeah, I, I mean, I've noticed that too. So many times colleges uh, can, only, can only see a few guys during the July period. Sometimes you have to babysit your commitments and your potential recruits that you've already evaluated. So a lot of kids you know, miss out opportunities to get full rides. A lot of kids end up in positions where they're in schools where they, they shouldn't really be. Well, there's guys that get over-recruited and make quick decisions, and then that school is stuck with that young man, and then they realize in July that he's not that good, and now you're in a bad situation because, you know, you gave your word, you're offered a scholarship, and, you know, you, people expect you to stay with your word. So yeah. I think April only helps the evaluation process. Yeah, well, what you just said, it, it brings to the point, uh, brings up the point that I, I, I stress this to kids whenever I talk to them about recruiting. 
a lot of times kids will get that one hot game, they get those high major offers, they'll jump on the highest level offer possible. But I can't stress enough to any kids watching this how important it is that you go to school at the best fit and not just the biggest name. Well, there's, there's no doubt about it. I coached at the high major for 15 years and the mid major for three years. And I can tell you, who's ever listening out there, whatever student athlete is listening, go where you can be an all league player and be realistic. If you can be all league in a high major conference, then that's where you should go. If you can be all league in a mid major conference, that's your greatest window of opportunity. That's how you can make the most money upon graduation because if you're not good enough for the NBA, the only way Europe wants you is they want to know how many points you scored, how many rebounds you had, how many assists, and did you win? So I believe that a young man should go where his greatest window of opportunity is to be an all league player. And that's going to, when you play and you're successful, you're going to be happy. Cool. Well, you heard it here first. Last question. Who's the most impressive player you've seen in the Peach Jam so far? Well, there's so many great players, and you put me on the spot on that oh. one, but I'm going to tell you what. Harrison Barnes is oh, a special good. player. It's 6'7", maybe 6'8", has all the perimeter skills that you could want. He's athletic, he defends, and he can score from the long range, the mid range, and he can get all the way to the rack. He's number one in the ESPNU yeah. rankings. And I've talked to him, and he's the kind of kid you talk about. He's the kind of dude who wants to improve, and he's a real good kid. Well, he's an excellent student. He, he has great character, and, and we voted him as one of the Gatorade State Players of the Year of Iowa. He got that award. He's an outstanding prospect and an outstanding individual. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, Dan Poneman here with Paul Biancardi, uh, IllinoisHSBasketball.com. You heard it here first. All right, guys. Until next time.